Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There would be those who would wonder about the consciousness of God. And how is it that such a high vibrating attitude could ever be presented in 3D? And so we again tell you that this is the puzzle of what you see happening now. That those who have come here designed to be the teachers, they would have the attributes needed to do what you are hearing now, are the ones that become the spiritual translators. And they're in the room. And we know who they are. And it goes beyond those who would channel right into those who would teach. It goes to those that call themselves in this room healers. For they have the same task as the channeler or the teacher. And that is translating a perceptual metaphorical message into 3D practicality. The healer stands before that person who comes before them. And their intellect knows at a 3D level only half the story. And the discernment of their higher self and the energy that pours to them, which we call channeling, gives them the rest of the picture. Where to touch. What energies to develop, whether to be soft or energetic. The teacher stands before the piece of paper, <laughs> which is empty, and asks, what is next? And on the paper starts to flow the information for the next sermon. Mm -hmm. And that's channeling. The one who sits in the chair empties their mind accordingly and does not give God a laundry list of things <laughs> that are wrong in their lives. That's the one that gets the answers the fastest. The wise one knows that God is always with them and knows all of the things that have occurred in their life. Right at the point they sat in the chair. We say it again, blessed is the one who is quiet and says, dear God, tell me what it is I need to know. Without a bias, without a prejudgment of what they think, the answer might be, hmm. And that's when it flows in. And sometimes the answer is simple. Dear one, if you come to that point, that precipice, and you need answers so badly and you want to hear the numbers or the words, don't be disappointed if all you get is a hug. <laughs> and my partner said it, that is an answer. And the answer when you get a hug is that Practical answers are on the way. You're going to get them. You're going to see them. Synchronicity will bring them in. In the process, relax. Without the relaxation of that, you will make decisions that will get in the way of the synchronicity that will occur. Therefore, the hug is an answer, isn't it? That you're not alone. That you're never alone. This entire seminar, this entire day, has been about perceptual communications. From the information about the alignment of 2012 right down to what my partner calls a quantum perception, has been everything he has been told to do. 
And through synchronicity, he has been given the teaching points. And this is the way it works. And whether it's an author on stage, or whether it's a mom with her kids, the answers come in these ways. The mother loves their children so much, wants to see them with wisdom. The children don't necessarily have yet. <laughs> Doesn't want them to make the mistakes they made. I want to tell you there are answers in that. There are answers in that. Teach the children what you know about God. <laughs> That's the answer. Don't teach the child what, what was wrong with what they did or what's wrong with what you did. Don't teach the child necessarily the lineage of mistakes you made. Instead, look in the child's eyes and say, I want to tell you what I found. That it's most important to me that goes beyond any generation gap that ever existed. I found God in me and you've got it in you. And you can find it any way you want to. But it's going to keep you out of trouble. It's going to keep you wise. And then innately you'll know what to do at the times when your parents are not around. You couldn't give a child anything better than that. This is quantum teaching. The word quantum used in a popular way. Meaning that which appears to be nonsensical randomness has purpose and there is a system to it. It can't see the logic of it because it's out of your dimensional perception. So I want this to be a message today, a core message, one that gets published about perception. I want to show you how human beings perceive God in an old and a new energy and how God perceives humans. Pieces and parts of all this been taught now for 21 years. We put it together so you can hear it yet again. Altogether, a perceptual message. Human beings are changing the way they think. But it cannot change unless you get out of what you would call the survival instinct of three dimensions. For within the reality that you claim is all there is, is the box you put God in. And that gets in the way of everything you do. Think about these things. All of these years, what humans do with energy. When you feel something that is not part of your reality, it disturbs you. And you do one of two things with it. You either worship it or you condemn it. Very few human beings absorb it. Because it's frightening, is it not? It is not in the box of the reality that you would expect. If a miracle happens, what do you do? Thank you, God, you say. All of the credit, therefore, goes to a divine power you cannot understand, which is beyond all things explainable. Hmm. And if something goes bump in the night, it's the devil. It's evil. Now let me expand your box for a moment. What if all of those things were normal? What if they're part of humanism? What if instead of closing in your box, you build a bigger box? Hmm. If that suits you, do it. Take the box and double its size and include energies you don't understand in the smaller box. And here is the invitation. <laughs> Spirit is having fun. <laughs> Sound from heaven. 
The next time you get an unusual healing, something that happens out of the normal, something that you might even label as typical spontaneous remission, <laughs> which isn't, <laughs> why don't you say, thank you inside the Creator, which allowed this to be manifested. Why don't you say, I am powerful in that I am a piece of God. And all of these things I give thanks for in the name of who I am. A creative piece of the universe learning to expand my energy. And when something goes bump in the night, you might consider that it's part of a system of energy. For we have told you that all energies that are produced on the planet stay here. Hmm? All good things, all bad things, in your purview. Hmm. If there was a dramatic moment, something that is abominable to the human spirit, it is imprinted in the air. Bang! Stays there like a tape that replays itself. It's energy. Doesn't necessarily mean it's an entity, does it? And you might experience it. It's not evil. It's simply energy. And what does it beg you to do? Clear it. We've told you this before because your energy allowance has an attribute. That light is more powerful than dark because light is active and dark is passive. That is to say, if you have a dark room and you open the door, dark does not leak out. If instead you light a match, darkness vanishes for it cannot exist with light there, you see? Dark has no substance for it is defined as the absence of light. Therefore, if you come upon an energy which you feel is a stamp of inappropriateness for your magnificence that is in your purview, turn on the light <laughs> and it will go away. It is as simple as that. You can address it. You can say, energy be gone, for you have no more purpose. Let there be light in this place. I've just given somebody an answer who came here for it. Hmm? It's time to expand the box. Perhaps it's time to eliminate it. The perception of the human being creates <laughs> what, is, what is called the magnificence of God and the power of evil. It's only a perception. Let me tell you what our perception is, that all of you, each one, carries a magnificent potential to control the energies for yourself, around you, for your life. Don't be afraid of either one. If you come across something inappropriate, clear it up. If you come across something magnificent, claim it as your power. And move forward to the next step. Do you hear what I'm saying? Time to have a perceptional shift, is it not? Humanity has consistently put God in a box of fear. You fear God, do you not? Because God is big and humans are not, supposedly. Let's talk about that human perception. The human wants to paste human attributes on the divine. The creator of the universe. Supposedly when you step across the veil, you're going to find strife. You're going to find war. You're going to find angels fighting angels. <laughs> That's your mythology, isn't it? You're going to find one of the attributes of humanity that you have pasted on God completely and totally. You're going to find Punishment and reward. Did you know it doesn't exist on this side of the veil? 
I want to tell you what exists on my side of the veil. A soup of magnificent energy. It sings a message in color and light. There's no strife here. The creator energy has no strife here. There's no punishment here. There's no reward here. There's only creator energy here. You're part of the creator energy family. You should know this. And you should have the wisdom also to know that all of the things you paste upon God are the human attributes. That you can't think past that box of what God must be like. Mm -hmm. And so you create wars in heaven. You create angel strife. You create things that would, that would then explain the devil. Fallen angels. Pearly gates. Lists of do's and don'ts, of goods and bads, accounting, places you go, golden streets, all human perspective pasted upon God. I want to tell you it's a lot different than that. And I, I want to remind you that there are those who have seen it. Why don't you ask somebody who has had what you would call a near-death experience when they got close, ever so close to the Creator's energy, when they just barely touched it, when, they were, when the heart was stopping and the breathing was almost gone before they were brought back to life with science. They got to go there. They got to touch the hand of God that was just barely creeping through the door that was barely opening. And what they saw was magnificent filled with love and filled with light and filled with family filled with beauty there was no strife there there was no punishment there and when they came back listen to what they told you for it changed their lives didn't it listen to each one talk about it there is nothing to fear they said death is is something you experience a lot of Blessed is the human being when they're born and when they die. And they have the wisdom to say, oh, it's uncomfortable. But I'll get over it. Because <laughs> I've done it before. Birth and death, most uncomfortable. And how many times have you done it, old soul? All of you are going to go through it again. All, every, every, every single one in this room is coming back. Sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I've said it before. You have the mind of God on the other side of the veil, not the mind of a human being. You see the Akash. You know who you are. You see the lineage, a purpose of who you are. You can't stay on my side of the veil when you're not complete when you're not finished here you are in the shift it's gonna shift the planet so that when you return you can finally do something do you understand what I'm saying this is the transition and you come back you can finally do something old soul it's eminent some of you over 50,000 years old hmm you're not going to stay away. You're not going to miss the end of the transition. There's a lot more here perceived than you know. In an old energy, humans even took God to the limit, making many of them, one for the ocean, one for the sky, giving them children, creating anger, Reward, love, and hate. All the Greek gods had that. Trickery, deceit, deception, revenge, all assigned to God. Have you ever heard a revengeful God? That is a human attribute pasted upon the energy of fear. There's nothing to fear. 
You're growing up. You're starting to understand that if the Creator is inside, that communication to God is instantaneous. It is yours to have. You don't need an intermediary. You might have in an older energy. That's why it occurred. Let me tell you about worship. Let me define worship for you. Blessed is the human being who gets together with another human being or a group of human beings to celebrate their divinity. That's worship. And what is exactly the thing you're worshiping? <laughs> is it a great divine power that you are going to kneel in front of? Or are you honoring that which is the God inside you? You know the answer. For humanity is beginning to see it and beginning to change. I am cryon, so I feel an interdimensionality that you cannot. I feel this box you're in. Do you know what's happened in this room in these years? Since the 80s? You know what's happened in here? Epiphanies. Joy. Transmutation of sorrow and fear into peace, understanding. You know how many human beings have been healed in this room? It's almost endless. The lineage of the space you sit in knows the truth of what I say. The very wood, the carpet, cement, plastic, <laughs> reeks with a message to me. I see it all. It makes me weep with joy of those that found the family in this room. And it doesn't just stop there. For spirit then looks at those who built it and the purpose and the intent of the builders. It doesn't even stop there. It even goes back to honoring those who created the name on the building. Their purpose, their vision, the synchronicity in their lives. A couple, not just the one, but the two. And had they not processed and proceeded in an old energy and fought against many things, the building would not be here. The synchronicity of the healings would not have occurred. This is what spirit sees. What is our perception of you, dear human being? I will tell you that there are those in the room who we see the same kind of lineage I just described about the founders here. That is to say that there are seeds being planted and synchronicity beginning that will create a place of worship, a place of healing within their own lives. And I don't mean a building. I mean a family that gets healed. You know who I'm talking to? I hope you do. At this moment, I speak to those in the building and not the reader, not the hearer. In the building, I am telling you there are those here who can leave different than they came. They can leave with the seed planting that will actually help those around them in ways that those around them will go on to affect those who are around those others around them. And you start what you would call then a pyramid of joy. <laughs> it's the first time I've used the term. That's what we see. That is our perception. We don't see a singular human being. We see the culmination 
of your lives, of your wisdom, of what you've learned, of the shamans that sit in the room pretending to be ordinary. We see the potential of what you can do and what is coming. But not if you don't believe it. Do you understand the profundity of what I am saying? If you walk out of the room unchanged, if you don't open your heart, there is no punishment. Same number of angels go out with you, dear one, as the healer. But what also goes out is lost potential. <laughs> There are those who have come for healing in the room. And so I'll just say it. Do you want it or not? And if you do, don't decide that it's going to be a spontaneous thing and run and get a blood test. What if instead there is something implanted in you to give you information and wisdom to proceed and meet somebody else who knows what to do? <laughs> what about that? Don't decide how it's going to work. Honor the process of synchronicity, of the planting of spiritual seeds that lead you to other places you not necessarily would have gone to. That's how healing works. It includes the healing of a workplace. And you know who I'm talking to right now. For you've come with this issue. I'll tell you how it can be healed and you don't believe it. It's going to start with you. <laughs> when you relax with the problem before you and it no longer pushes the buttons of drama, anger, and frustration, watch what happens around you. It'll solve itself. I want to tell you there's energies that want to push your buttons. And as long as you react, they're happy. When you stop reacting, They'll find something else to do. You understand the process I just gave you? Let it begin in you. Every master that walked this earth had an attribute. People loved them. Animals loved them. Children loved them. Nature loved them. They could walk by flowers and they'd bloom. <laughs> this is real. They had the energy of God. And all of nature saw it. All of the children saw it. All the animals saw it. And an adult, even one who was dense in an older energy, didn't understand but just wanted to sit next to him. And that includes the Christ. The one whose picture hangs laughing in the hallway. You just want to be with him, didn't you? Can you imagine if he were here? What would this magnificent master have to offer? I want to tell you, most of you wouldn't care. You just want to sit next to him <laughs> and feel the love and enjoy the presence and know all is well. And you know I'm right. So here's the puzzle. How would you like that for you? <laughs> to be so alive with that which is inside that all those around you just want to be with you. They don't want you to do anything. They just want to be with you. Mom, I'll tell you something. If you make the shift, your children are not going to leave you. Now that's for somebody reading. Don't be afraid of it. Because the children are going to see God in you. They're not going to see weirdness in you. Don't give them a crying book. Just be a great mom. They'll find their own books. That's the perception we have. A long term planting of seeds that sometimes don't even bloom until you come back in another body. What about that? But unless you do it right now, the next one is going to have the same problems you've got today. Hmm? 
So why not create a setup that allows for you to change your Akash now? So that no matter what happens in the future, no matter what the incarnation or expression you have, you're going to come in ready to work with a light turned on. And you never have to go through what you've gone through this time, ever. How does it sound? Well, that's what the human being can do in this energy. And that's our perception today of you. It's not a fearful God. It's a magnificent family partner with its hand out. Hmm? Can you get over the perception that God is big and you're not? Can you get over the perception that God's in the sky and you're not? Can you instead encompass a perception that says you are everywhere and that God is you? And when you walk out the door, you're not alone. And when you have a perplexing problem or a frustration, you can learn to breathe, relax, and get the answer you need. And it may not be in 3D. It may not be in the numbers or the words. But you'll know which direction to turn because you'll feel it. Trust first impressions. They're the ones that are subtle. They're the ones that you're not used to. That's the energy that is expanded outside of the box that you're in. Don't analyze it. Don't in intellectualize it. Listen to your heart. There is a balance between the intellectual and the heart. It's needed to move into the areas that we speak of. Don't throw away your logic. Enhance it with the heart. Hmm. And then here's something for somebody. My partner spoke of the bias that the human always wants to move forward and never backward. You don't understand. Sometimes moving back is to revisit something to learn it better. It's not a bad thing. Somebody needed to hear that here. Give it another shot. Don't make up your mind. It's over. And that's for you. And you know who I'm talking to. I know who you are. Why wouldn't I? Family, why wouldn't I? With auras that are 26 feet across, why wouldn't I? You think you're hiding in the back there? <laughs> oh magnificent I have a woman sitting here who used to hold a very big sword <laughs> and she knows who she is in battle he was great <laughs> And now she holds the sword differently. Today it's the sword of truth. And she slays drama. And she slays all things inappropriate. And the sword is even bigger. Mm. You don't know who you are. Maybe it's time you, you listened to inside your DNA knows. Inside your DNA, 90% of it is involved in spiritual quest. 90% is quantum. Less than 5% of DNA makes 30,000 human genes. That's the 3D part. 90% is all the rest. It is the beauty of the higher self. It is the angel inside. It is the guides. It is the Akashic record. It is the pointers to the, to the entourage. It's the pipeline. It's the golden cord. It's whatever you want to call it. It's in every single human being. And you are beginning to activate it. It brings you to the chairs today, does it not? It makes you wonder why you're here. I know why you're here. I know what brought you here. You all have something in common. You're all my family. You even remember what the universe looks like. You can hardly wait to take a look again. Beautiful beyond words. Glorious with energies 
that you will remember when you go back and when it's time you'll return. There is no one God. There is all of us. And how many is that? Hmm? It's all. An infinite number of ones that together make it all work in a system called love. That is the power of the universe and you can see it in the way the creator creates. Astronomers pay attention for you're looking at a benevolent creator and you can see it in that which is created in the universe. It is biased for life. It is not random. There is a system and physics is starting even to discover it. He even gave it a name, intelligent design. There it is. Proof, if you wish, that God is good. Do you have a fearful God? Or do you have a family member? That's the question we leave you with. Perception. Change it. And you're going to find something that you didn't expect. As you vibrate higher, all of the things that have been in a higher vibration will start to show themselves. Invisible to you in a lower vibration, observable and usable in a higher one. The tools lay there, unused and ready. Manifestation is yours. Longer life, the elimination of disease, the beginning of you being able to change your own cellular structure, your makeup. You can do things that only stem cells can do with your very conscious thought. It's always been there. But you're going to have to vibrate higher to see it. Perception. How do you perceive us? I hope today has changed it. And you will see us the way we are. A family with our hands out, ready to take yours. On a journey you didn't expect. And so it is. <laughs>